I want to tell you that a, a couple of years ago, the atheist of the city of London put a bunch of money together and bought all of the signage on the side of the double-decker buses. And you know what it said? It said, there probably is no God. Go ahead and enjoy your life. And you would think that as a preacher, the part that would make me mad is the part that says there probably is no God. That didn't do it for me. What set me off is where it says, go ahead and enjoy your life. You know, the people who are real heroes of mine are Frank Saldana and Inner City Action, who are the teams that are working all over this tent, right? Clap for them real loud. Clap for them. Thank you, Frank. I can name so many. Morgan up here, Cassandra, Monique, all of you. They're like family to me. But you know what they see in their work? A young girl, maybe 14 years old, will wander into their center. She's a prostitute, high on drugs, because her pimps keep putting a needle in her arm so she can do her work. Day after day after day, we've watched that Frank has brought them in and they've gotten saved and they've been spared from hell only to be kidnapped again by those primps and immediately they are forced, tied down and they put a needle in their arm again. Now tell that 14-year-old girl, Mr. Atheist, to go on and enjoy her life. Tell the single mother who lives across from a crack house or in the killing fields of Chicago or the misery of New York City. Tell them, go ahead and enjoy your life. This is the lie of the modern culture and you need to quit watching their films and listening to their lie. And you need to understand. You know, in the quietness of your own time, your thoughts of regret, your thoughts of disappointment, they will work on you. And you will realize that the foundation of your life is something that you keep yourself busy. You keep yourself stimulated because at the moment when the wheels of your life stop, that spark of needing to confess and needing to kneel before God and to say, I'm so sorry. I've ruined everything. I've wrecked everything. I've been so wrong. And I want to get right. I'm not done yet. That billboard on the side of the bus says, there's probably no God. Go ahead and enjoy your life. Nobody's enjoying their life. Except those that have Christ as Lord of their life. You know what? I've got to say this. I've got to say it to the bully professor. I've got to say it to the atheist. I've got to say it to Oprah directly. Quit, quit telling me that I messed myself up by giving my life to Christ. Quit telling me that I checked my brain at the door. Quit telling me that I gave up my individuality and my power of choice. When I gave my life to Christ, everything beautiful began to happen to me and everything vile went away somebody clap for Christ. somebody tell the world what the lord means to you what it meant to you to meet him The deepest pain of your life is because you have unconfessed sin. The deepest agony of your life is because there's something you want to tell God. And now, 
I'm going to say something very controversial. And I hope you will think before you react. It was bad enough that woke culture said you don't need to repent. It was bad enough that our current administration is exalting sin. It's bad enough that our schools taught perversion to our children. I understand why they said you don't need to repent. But my God, why did the pastors start doing it? Not all of them. Not all of them. There are many great men and women of God under this tent and all over this state. But you know exactly who I'm talking about. One of them got on TV and said, The Lord has not led me to preach against sin. And he will stand before God for speaking that lie. For Jesus said, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. There's never been a release of the kingdom of God without repentance, without confession of sin. Then we have another minister that said, God is offended when you confess your sin. He even said that the verse in 1 John 9 that says, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin. He said that verse was written to, non to uh, non-Christians. It wasn't written to Christians. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself when it begins with that it was addressed to a house church. It is amazing how naive Christians are today. As soon as someone gets a Facebook page, as soon as someone gives a prophetic word, people are buying into it. Let's get back in the word of God. Somebody help me now. And let's stop. Let's stop having out-of-Bible experiences. You know what happened to you, man of God? You know what happened to you, woman of God? Someone came and said, you know, I've got a big church. I've got a giant church. I need a golf cart to get across my church. And you could have a church just like me if you come to my seminar. And here's a young pastor, a young couple, beating their brains out to grow a church. And suddenly they give them a, a binder and a syllabus and they flatter them and they get them aside. And suddenly their pulpit is poison. Suddenly there's no preaching on repentance anymore. Suddenly there's this, this moment where all of a sudden they say to themselves, you know what, I may not be telling the truth, but at least my church is growing. And here's the worst lie of all. The worst lie is how unnecessary it is to compromise. If you see this audience here, look at the size of this audience. Were they tricked here, seduced here? Did we use big screen skinny jeans and fog machines to get them in here? Did we lie to them? Did we promise them something stupid? No, because people are hungry to get right with God. Millions of Christians go to a church. They say they're 90 million evangelicals. If only 1% of them were on fire, you think we'd have the mess in Washington, D.C. that we have right now? It's that they can live with abortion. It's that they can live with immorality. It's that they can live with a compromise that says this, better for us to appear loving to the outside world than to bring up the issue. You see what's on my face right now? Look, at these are lights. David Wilkerson preached a powerful sermon on that we are the light of the world. We are lights. But you know what? If you shine a light into some basements, you're going to see roaches running everywhere. So this idea that shining the light is always a smiling, peaceful, loving experience, it's not true. 
We need to shine a light on the lies that are being told to our children. We're not being a light. When you tell someone that something is a sin, you're shining a light if you do it in love. You know, I was at NBC News said to me, what is your position on homosexuality? What is your opinion? I said, I, my opinion doesn't matter, but I can tell you what the Word of God said. Let, help me, somebody. We're supposed to be a light. 